Good afternoon all. I'm just doing some soldering on the Vocoder project. Um, what I'm trying to do is build three base filter boards. I've virtually completed this one. Actually, I have completed it. Well, there's a few bits and bobs that aren't fitted like these RCA sockets. And I haven't put the pots on yet. I've just put a link in there, which effectively means that the pot is turned fully clockwise, full volume. So yeah, I'm just uh, making up three of these things because I thought the first audio test of this thing I do could be uh, six filters. Now these baseboards are two filters and they have two plug-in filters. So it'll be six full filter modules and they'll sit side by side. Um, I've numbered them. So these are numbers five and six. This one is seven and eight, which will go there and this is nine and 10, which will sit there. And they're gonna sit within a 10th of an inch of each other because that's how they'll be mounted uh, on that front panel. So at the moment, what I'm doing is I'm going through the circuit diagram of the baseboard, fitting all of the components which are common to each baseboard because they're not related to filter frequencies. And I'm not fitting these components which I've marked XX which are filter uh, specific. So they vary between each of these seven baseboards. And I think I'm nearly there. Uh, these are only fitted on the middle two boards because it's a network that is distributed among all the boards. So they're done. Uh, these I've got to do right now, 2K2, R17 and R43. So I've got some 2K2s out here. Them there. Uh, for R7 and R43, where are they? They are, that's a very good question. Oh, there they are, R17 and R43. So they're in these positions. I think they're fitted on these. Yeah, and you might be able to see that they're 2K2. So I need to fit it to these two boards. Let's do that. First, I'll put my bend radius on these. And I put a bend radius on with some precision so that they are an interference fit in the board and they won't fall out. That's just how I like to do it. Right, so let's push them in. And I'm also doing them with the 2-2, two -two, the sort of uh, left to right readability, following the silkscreen lettering. I don't know why. <laughs> I just am. So yeah, that's a nice interference fit. So 2K2, that'll be that way around. And because I'm only doing resistors and diodes, this still can lay flat on my bench. And I've kind of been experimenting with not having a solder mound that has a sort of mountain shape, because that's really more relevant to single-sided boards. So I'm thinking with these double-sided, I'm actually experimenting with having so little solder in the hole that there's a slight concave just in there. I don't know why I'm doing this. I just figured I'd have a play with it. But if you think about it, these through holes go all the way through the board. So if you get solder to fall into the hole, that's a huge surface area of joint, far bigger than you would ever get on a single sided board. So you don't really need to mound it all up on the surface. So yeah, I'm just putting enough solder in and this is eco, isn't it? Because you use less solder. And I'll show you this in close up when I'm done. And I'm just, yeah, just putting it in so that it's kind of a concave thing. So let's have a quick look at that. Where's my, here it is. Let's take a look at that. So yeah, they're relatively flat and concave. Oh, I can't focus on that. Why is that? Yeah, so I'm not mounding them up. Let's just look at the ones on the other side. And uh, yeah, I'm quite liking this approach. Why can't I focus that? Is it because I'm not really looking at the camera very well? No, it's because I'm too near. Yeah, so very flat they are. No great mound of solder, because I figure you don't need it, because look how thick the board is, and that solder runs all the way through that hole. It's more than enough. And then uh, that means I can also cut them much more flush to the board. 
Now those are my steel cutoffs, they're stuck to a magnet. These are my copper ones, I'm separating my metals. Yeah, recycling, you know, all that kind of stuff. So these are my tinned copper cutoffs. And then what I'll do is dip a magnet in there at some point and pull all the steel ones out. This is a, a, a recent innovation. Right, 2K2s on this board, uh, R43 and R17. Once again, let's get the two and the two. Oh, it's that way around. Uh, 2K2 is red, red, black, brown. So it's 2201, and then there's another brown at the end, which is the 1%, because these are all 1% resistors. I bought some uh, new resistors from Rapid Electronics. I have been buying ridiculous amounts of resistors, but I just wanted to sort of stock up with all the common values. So I've done the 10s and the 47s. I'll never need to buy resistors again, probably. Okay, let's do this with mine relatively flush soldering yeah there's just no need to build a huge mound let's use less tin and lead so sparse soldering my new thing eco soldering and cut the wires off into the copper receptacle right so that's the 2k2s i've got a feeling that's all the uh components which are non-filter specific so now i can focus on filter specific numbers but what i'm gonna have to do is go through this and mark in the values now do i have one printout and attempt to mark all the values for the different filters i've done seven and eight so i only need to do five six nine and ten channels uh, or do I do multiple printouts you see if I'm going to be eco really I should just work to one printout and write more data on this one piece of paper so now I think I'll turn my attention to the plug-in daughter board uh, filter boards I'm going to make four of these I've got two kind of done already which are in filter seven and eight and in fact I've marked them seven and eight because on here there are lots of filter specific components around the filter there. This is the rectifier and uh, these are the components I'm going to fit now onto these boards because they're not filter specific. It's just a whole load of 4K7s. Let's have a look at the circuit diagram for that. Yeah, these 4K7s here, one, two, three, four, and a couple of 1N4148. So I'm going to put all these in, these resistors. That is marked XX so that is filter specific I'm not quite sure why uh, that's an input resistor to this there's no capacitor there. I can't quite see why that would be filter specific maybe it's just a, a gain issue that you need a bit more volume on the higher frequencies or the other way around not sure really well now my 4k7 tray doesn't look very full so I think what I'll do is get some more because I bought a big box of those yeah because there are four 4k7s per filter board these plug-in daughter boards and there are 14 of these boards that's what 56 resistors so I bought a box of a thousand resistors 4k7 0.6 watts dash s I think s means the small version of 0.6 watts perhaps there's a bigger version uh, 1% 50 parts per million 1% tolerance what's the 50 parts per million then I'm not entirely sure anyway let's get some of these out I think I'll cut off uh, one strip I need some scissors for that at the risk of having an odd number because I tend to cut these into twos I'll cut that off arbitrarily and then uh, I'm not sure actually I should use the scissors for this really so I'll cut these into pairs and then I'll put them into that little green plastic box with the flip lid well, I'll do this off camera you don't want to watch me cut these up will I get lucky 
with the pairs. No, <laughs> well, I'll have one triple, why not? It was a 50% chance either way, wasn't it? Triple, pair, 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 and so on. Which I'll just disconnect that one from the row. Which way does it go that way? Because it's a bit unwieldy. This will fit nicely in my shot. And then when they're all cut up, I'll bung them in there. So how many do I need? Uh, four times four boards. So that's eight of these pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. And all the rest can go in my little box. Uh, right, that's that. Replenished. Clip that back onto here. Which way does that slide? That way. Yep, that can go back in the drawer. So these are in a little square arrangement. One, two, three, four, around this U2 op amp. So once again, let's bend these with a interference fit radius. You just get to know the precise shaping of the curve of the leg away from the body after a while to get you that perfect interference fit. Lovely. Ah yes, of course I remember now, these are uh, Enig coated, gold plating coated, rather than the Hassel. It's these four resistors I'm pretty sure. That was slightly wide bent, but not too bad. Oh, I'm following this um, lettering idea with my my 4701 follows the silkscreen lettering oh yeah these are a bit wide if anything but wide still presents an interference fit good so those all fit there let's get soldering so i've been soldering hassle how's it going to feel to solder the enig with my new minimal solder idea doesn't flow quite as well on the Enig. The uh, solder to gold doesn't take quite as well as solder onto solder. I think probably for obvious reasons. So I'm just having to sort of, oh that one's gone a bit moundy. Oh never mind, can I put that under my finger like that, a bit more solder length. Yeah, it's just not quite as satisfying soldering onto this gold plate. Just takes a little bit more effort to get it to flow. But there we are. Yeah, they've mounded up a bit. Let's have a close up. I mean, I'm not really bothered. This is the conventional shape for a solder joint. It's just not my new low profile solder joint which uses less solder and therefore is more eco-friendly. Trim these off. Now these are copper legs aren't they? So they don't go on my magnet, they go in my pot. I've got a huge tin full of these cutoffs. Actually I'll get it in a moment. It's got thousands of them, well tens of thousands probably, because it was all the cutoffs from when I was making well, actually, I think I've been collecting cutoffs for decades. Let's have a look. Yeah, they're in this biscuit tin. It's quite dusty because it sits in the corner of the room. And it's really quite full. Yes, that's a lot of cutoffs. Probably hard to see, but this is a good 220 centimetres deep. And there are a lot of cutoffs in there. Now, probably a mix of copper and steel in there. So if I put a magnet in there, it's going to pull big chunks of that out. Something about these four band colours that's just not very, what's the word, evocative of my early electronics days. 4K7 was always orange, purple, red. It just was. And now, of course, with these four bands, it's orange, purple, black, brown. It just takes a bit of getting used to. Anyway, let's uh, pull some more. 
out, put this bend radius on, but not go quite so mad this time. Let's try and keep it slightly smaller bend radius. Yeah, and then I think today, I'm just doing a sort of little and often uh, bit of soldering today, just a little bit, do it daily, progress these boards. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll fit these 16 resistors and then call it day on that, get on with some uh, editing or perhaps write a description for my latest video, which I will upload this afternoon. So a bit more resistor radius bending soldering and I'm kind of done. So that's a little window onto a soldering afternoon. Cheerio.